Tom here from Lawrence Systems, and we're going to dive into the right to repair again because, well, it's an unsettled issue and the fight is still ramping up. We have lobbyists paid for by companies such as CompTIA who really don't like that people like Lewis Rossman, who has put a lot of time and effort into, you know, fighting this bill and that stops your ability to repair devices you own and possess. And I'll leave links to his channel and video. And if you're watching this on YouTube, you've undoubtedly seen Lewis Rossman's video on this. They've actually asked him, the lobbyists have, they were trying to stop him from publishing these. And these are public hearings that he's been talking about and showing this. And of course, the Streisand effect is really what if you want to look up a term, is really kicking in because as companies like CompTIA keep lobbying against it and companies like, well, Rossman's, and I'm trying to do my part as well, are exposing and talking about the fact that the right to repair is being fought by these other companies, it's only raising more awareness and hopefully getting the public more engaged. Call your senator, support the EFF, etc. And I'll leave a link to some articles and more resources. And of course, like I said, if the simplest is the EFF. Uh, they're really been on the right side of this for a long time. Now, for those of you saying, I don't have any desire to repair my own devices, why should I care? And I just really like this quote regarding free speech and privacy from Edward Snowden that says, arguing that you don't care about the right to privacy because you have nothing to hide is no different than saying you don't care about free speech because you have nothing to say. So you have nothing to say, maybe you don't care about the First Amendment, but the reality is, I know if you're watching this video, you're watching it on some device undoubtedly that you own, and the whether or not you're able to repair that device is in jeopardy based on some of these bills. Now I have something in front of me, just this laptop. And why would someone bring a laptop to a small repair shop? And this is really simple. People bring things to different repair shops. It's not, you know, I'm, I'm gonna be a little bit uh, frank about this. It is a terrible experience dealing with any of the manufacturers when it comes to getting things repaired. They have just not created a great ecosystem. And they have companies like me, and someone's gonna say, well, you're just self-interested, or so is Rossman, because you run repair facilities. Uh, this is just you just wanting to get a piece of the pie that these uh, manufacturers and OEMs wanna lock down. And while there is definitely, we do set, you know, uh, make money repairing this, well, why are we able to undercut the OEMs? Well, the OEMs sometimes want to lock you in, not give us resources, tools, and come down to the point of going legally after us. And anyone who's dealt with the OEMs in terms of customer experience, and uh, you know, it's terrible. You know, taking it to the manufacturer that made it and dealing with them is generally a lot of phone calls to people that may not speak your language very well and will sit you in call queues forever, hoping to either wait you out to where you'll just go and get angry and buy another brand, or you will eventually get through to someone and then you have to decide is your time worth sending it to them, getting it to them and dealing with their whole process. This has been just an absolute pain and this is why if it wasn't for this market and them creating this, they wouldn't be all these repair shops like us that go around fixing things. It's as simple as that. It's just a, it's inhibiting the free market is what this is a lot about. And I've seen it twisted and conflated by these lobbyists to say, no, 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 this is the uh, going to hurt people wanting to get in there because they're going to have to allow other companies to repair their stuff and, per, and put resources, not just into designing something, but then in being able to make that stuff public. Well, the reality is you, you can see how they are trying to conflate this. You're like, yeah, that would make it hard for uh, someone to start up a new company and design a new phone and then they'd have to make tools available. No, they took the time to design and make the schematics. We're just asking that, you know, you don't come after us legally when we take that thing back apart. And obviously to build anything requires design schematics. So making it information public, not that big of a deal. These public documents, and I've been in a repair industry for a long time, electronics repair, I did TV repair, I did even VCR repair that dates me if the gray hair doesn't enough uh, for things I've fixed over the years. And the ability to fix it is always just kind of been there. No one's really had to think about it. And what's happening though, is these larger OEM companies are trying to make it illegal for you to repair. And this is why we need a right to repair bill. Think of it more like a freedom of speech bill. So it's not like another law that's creating more complexities for companies to do business. As a matter of fact, it just says, no, you can't restrict people like myself or Lewis Rossman or any other repair company from repairing devices. And how does this help the consumer in the big picture? You have have more choice. And there are people arguing once again and creating it. Well, you know, consumers could just choose a different product if that company didn't have satisfactory thing. The, the nature of making hardware and 
phones, like I'm holding this, because this is a big piece of the device right here as things more and more go to mobile. Um, the right to repair these type of devices, it, they're very difficult to manufacture. Not just anyone can start up a phone company tomorrow and build one. There's a lot that goes into it. So we have fewer choices because of the technical details it takes to start a phone company, to start a manufacturer of hardware. So the market choices are a little bit limited. We're just asking that you don't limit people's repair choices uh, because that's a little bit different. And you know, someone brought us this laptop here. It needed just a little piece replaced right here, real small part, no big deal. Uh, the part was actually inexpensive, but these are the restrictions these OEMs are trying to do. They try to stop you from even acquiring the parts. And uh, this is, obviously just not good. It's not good for landfills. It's not good for things like that because, well, they want to sell you another one, not repair the existing one. And uh, because we can repair this for a small part and a small fee, the customer can have their laptop back and it actually has a more useful life left on it. So once again, all of these lobbyists are trying to conflate this. I'll leave links to uh, some articles if you want to read further on this. I just want to raise a little bit of awareness, have people, you know, Join in on this. If there's something you can do, contact your local lawmakers if this is going on in your area. Work with the EFF. The Electronic Frontier Foundation has been on the right side of this for a long time. Um, follow Lewis Rossman for, you know, he's d diving more in depth on the topic on there, and I fully support what he's been doing. And I was, you know, great to see people like iFixit. They have been providing people the ability to tear down and information and schematics and all their stuff. They do repairability scores. They're an amazing site, an amazing resource for people that want to repair things themselves. So there's a lot out there and there's a lot riding on this. It is an important thing. I don't want anyone to conflate this with some type of anti-business or we're against small businesses, et cetera, uh, which I've seen in, an, or even the crazy, uh, well, you know, OEMs will properly recycle things and stuff like that. We properly recycle anything. If this was unrepairable, for example, we work with local recycling, electronics recyclers, they keep that out landfills, break all the parts down, separate the battery, separate the parts that can be recycled with plastic, electronics, even the small EMs. These are programs that are completely available to us. It's not just large vendors that have the ability to recycle. We're not throwing these away even when they can't be repaired. And I'm work, I would say most of the people I meet in the tech community we all have recyclers that we work with to dispose of things we can't repair. So uh, I haven't seen any of their arguments hold up with these lobbyists. I just want to keep throwing it out there, uh, raise awareness, and do my part if I can to keep this industry afloat. And like I said, how it affects consumers. You want a better experience, you want to be able to fix your stuff. You should care about us who take time fixing it and the laws that affect that because you don't want to buy a device and find out that it's completely locked in, vendor, your OEM only. I mean, this has been well established in the car market and there's a reason not everyone takes things to the dealership because, well, there's an entire you know, mechanics places and tire shops and everything else for your car. The concept's not that different. And by the way, that industry has also, the automotive industry has also fought and lost to lock the hood of your car down so you can't get into it. And don't worry, they're watching this too because this will set precedents and carry over to other industries. So uh, keep an eye on this, uh, keep reading on it, make sure you stay up to date and uh, do your part to help. If anything you can do to help, like I said, uh, I, I'll leave links to some resources, but the EFF is a real simple one if you're looking for some, you know, easy way to do it. Thanks.